Dung Beetle Innovations has transformed from a non-profit group developed for an MPI sustainable farming fund project into an enterprise rearing beetles on a commercial scale. The project began back in 2009. By the time we came to the end, which is in about 2013, it had about a million dollars worth of funding poured into it, plus another half million dollars in kind, so just people contributing their time and resources. So dung beetle innovations is very much about dung beetle breeding, uh, releasing obviously onto farmers' properties, uh, and it's also got a component of research. So once we've got beetles and people um, um, you know, have bought them and understand them, they also need to know some facts about you know, how, how do they change pasture productivity, how do they uh, reduce nutrient leaching. So we have a lot of research that also looks at those issues. These guys are all about balancing the system. Ultimately, the dung beetles should have come in 150 years ago when we bought stock into the country, uh, but they didn't. And so that's why farmers now have the opportunity to rebalance their system. They've got all the dung being produced. These guys will bury it into the ground. The company started in 2014, so it took a number of years to start breeding the beetles. So obviously, the way beetles breed, you start with a small number, and then you need to retain them, and you keep breeding them and breeding them. And eventually, you get to a point where you have sufficient you can skim off and start selling those. We mass rear them out here at Shelley Beach Farm in the South Kaipara in large bins and then we harvest those beetles that emerge and quite literally pack them up. They go into a courier pack, two days later the farmer has them and sprinkles them around their farm. Oh, so that's interesting. This tells us that they've already started their nesting, which is really good. Maybe we can pitfall trap these nesters out, the early ones and get them ready for trial. We've got permission to bring 11 different kinds of dung beetles to New Zealand that are specific to pastoral environments. In terms of their efficiency and what they do for their benefits, they're being well studied abroad in similar pastoral habitats. Um, but what we're currently doing here is looking in a New Zealand context, um, those sorts of findings, how they attribute to what the beetles are doing here. So Dungville Innovations also engages in post-release research and monitoring. The typical life cycle for a dung beetle, there's a lot of cooperation between boys and girls, adults, it's probably one of the highest levels of cooperation between the sexes. The male tends to make a brood ball or a ball of dung beneath the soil. The female then goes and lays an egg into it and that egg develops into a little grub, we we'll call them a larva, but for intensive purposes we call it a grub that's encapsulated inside that ball of manure, goes through a few stages fattening up, turns into a chrysalis or a pupa, and around to a neat adult. And that's the standard process, but depending on the species, that life cycle can be anything from six to eight weeks, all the way to six months to some of the species, even to a year for some of the more long-lived beetles as well. So that it's a variable depending on what species you have, but that's the basic life cycle. So this here is a display which shows a typical soil profile beneath any given cow pat. When there's a fresh pile of poo put onto the pasture surface or in our containers, boys and girls are both cooperating, creating a tunnel beneath that pile of poo. And into that tunnel, if you think of an upside down tree with lots of branches, each of those tunnels or branches, they pack a brood ball. And so these brood balls get formed at the bottom of the tunnel and successively they add a new one and a new one and a new one and a new one up. Each of those branches are underneath in the tunnels and each of those has an egg laid inside it so that dung's being buried for this. What we go through is a series of steps on whereabouts they put them in the farm, typically a centrally positioned paddock within your farm because the beetles do fly but they don't want to fly far as a, a fitness thing so they want to go to where the nearest available cow pad is so as long as the paddock's stocked with fresh manure that's where the beetles will hang out. If you're rotating stock to the next paddock over, the beetles invariably will follow where the smell of the fresh manure goes. The other thing is, of course, we have a reliance on various drenches, porons and ejectables for such things as internal parasites. So we have to go through a basic process of double checking with the farmer what time of the year in which they're drenching their stock, typically know when they're doing it and what stock they're doing. 
and there's a number of processes and types of drenches in which they can utilise that are dung beetle friendly. There's huge numbers of benefits that are being shown overseas, which we want to see here as well. So each cow pet's full of good nutrients, phosphates and nitrates. If it's assimilated into the soil horizon, then it's made available for your pasture, as it is for all the microorganisms and microbacteria and earthworms, everything else that utilises it beneath the soil. So if you've got a lot of manure on your paddocks going in very quickly, that's being uptaken by everything in the soil community beneath it. On average, most cows defecate about 11 times a day each cow. But each cow pad itself is fouling on the pasture surface. But it's not only that, it's, a, it's an actually repugnant thing for any livestock animal to want to feed on it or around it. So the area of probably about five times the size around that pile is avoided at all costs to, um, because it's repugnant. No, one, <laughs> no animal wants to feed around that area. It's also an evolutionary mechanism because that zone is the area of uptake of diseases and everything else, so they've learned to avoid it. If you can get rid of that manure within 24 to 48 hours, once you've got an established abundant population of beetles, then you're increasing your available pastures area to utilise for your stock. The cost of a package of beetles ranges, so if you're a small block holder, you'll have a package which is $1,200, and that starts you off with one species in a small number. For our commercial farmers, there's a couple of different options. They either have a starter pack, which is again one species, but there's more of them for um, $2,000, or ultimately people buy whole farm packages. So they really need lots of species, and a whole farm package is $6,000. But for that money, they get four species, and the big thing about going from one species to four is suddenly you've got coverage for a lot longer period of the year. Uh, a dung beetle will operate for about three months of the year, so if you can have um, different species that operate at different times of the year, then that gives you much better coverage. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.